What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Good morning. 51,345 miles. That's right. That's where we are. Uh, and we accomplished that in basically four months. So it's time to do the, uh, the review on the truck that I promised you guys. Uh, I'm going to talk about how we how we started the, the truck, how it went through its break-in period. And I know there's a million ways to do it and everyone's got a different answer. And I did the way that I did. Uh, it was my choice and so be it. I uh, didn't upload yesterday because my son's 18th birthday party wound up taking almost the entire day. Um, so... I know I said I would upload yesterday. Uh, we got kind of wrapped up doing the, the birthday thing. And by the time we got home, uh, it was it was dark. And uh, didn't uh, didn't want to do this video in the dark. Just because I'm, I'm going over the truck tip to tip. So I wanted daylight so that I could share it with you guys. And besides, now it's snowing. And I like snow. Uh, I know a lot of people don't. It does make the job a little bit more difficult. But... Uh, I was able to get through a pretty pretty decent amount of it on Wednesday without too much issue out of the truck. So I, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, that was my first real snow in this truck. And uh, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, it did really well. I was surprised actually at, at how well it did. Considering I did it pulling that 35 foot trailer. And it didn't care. It, it, was, it was fine with it. So... Uh, we're going to start with uh, how I broke the truck in and what the mileage was when I when I started working. And as you saw, we're just over 51,000 right now. So I bought this truck brand new. Uh, it had, I think it had 17 miles on it when I, when I test drove it. And uh, actually, I test drove this one twice. Uh, this was the first truck that I looked at because I was, I was, once I learned of the uh, the massaging seats, I was fairly certain I wanted a 450 just because of what my plans were with where I was going to go, which now I I don't think is going to happen. I don't think that's where I'm going. So, uh, I test drove it till I think we were at like 51 miles by the time I finished the second test drive and uh, signed papers and I took it home. So with 51 miles on it, I brought it home. Hadn't even gone to DMV yet. Hadn't registered it in my uh, in my name. Still had the dealer plates on it, all that yada, yada, yada. And I went to U-Haul and I rented a trailer because I had done several uh, bike projects. Um, the reason that I bought this house specifically, where, where I am now, is it's it's zoning it, it's commercial up here so i was going to put a shop right there and just work on motorcycles uh didn't you know wasn't trying to get rich wasn't trying to be a millionaire wasn't none of that crap just wanted to own my own business on my property where i owned my house and just live the american dream um after working on uh several several bikes for friends just to kind of get my feet wet and start to get a name out for myself before I actually set up the shop. Uh, I learned that my hands were, my hands were getting bad and they were, uh, they were getting there fairly quickly. So I abandoned that idea and uh, that's how we ended up here doing RVs. But I had several boxes and piles of motorcycle parts and yada, yada, yada. So, and we had bought a new couch. So we had the old couch here and my Duramax had been dead so we didn't have a truck to remove the old couch and so we just had like just some some crap so uh rented a trailer and threw it on the back of this truck when it was brand new and hauled out it we're talking with all everything in the trailer and stuff we were maybe three or four thousand pounds like we weren't working the truck but I've always been under the philosophy of break them in how you're going to use them and they will be much happier. So that's what, uh, that's what this, this truck got. It got broken, pulling things, granted it wasn't real heavy. And, uh, I was 
a little bit hard on it. Like I wasn't matting the throttle and burnouts and, and, and everything, but you know, I was letting the turbo spool up. I was letting it build some cylinder pressure. I was, um, I wasn't taking it to redline, but I was taking the RPMs up higher than what most people or out higher than what some people would say is proper. But I knew what it was going to do and I wanted it to be okay running in those higher RPMs. Now, again, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't full throttle and maxing out the turbo or anything, but I was, I was putting it through some paces during the break-in. Uh, and then we did two, two fairly large, uh, highway trips. You know, one was like, one was like 1200 miles and one was like 600, 700, something like that. Just to get some highway miles on it, we did some city driving. And then right around 3,500 miles, somewhere right, right around there. Uh, I'm not 100% positive on that number. Um, I was actually, the, the house that I stayed at in Idaho Falls, uh, that guy lived here and helped him move. So that's uh, four hours each way. And he had a 24-foot car hauler, and we loaded it up. It was probably around 16,000, 17,000 pounds. And like I said, right around 3,000, 3,500 miles, something like that, uh, started doing that. So pulled it empty for a couple hundred miles loaded it up to the max weight of uh, the, the 16 or 17, whatever it was, and then took it over there four hours and then brought it back empty four hours and then took it over there full and then brought it back and then took it over there a third time full and left it there. And I went from that house to Wakarusa for orientation. So I ended, I, I did my, my first oil change right before the, the third trip, which was 4,600 miles. Did my first oil change, and by the time I got to uh, Wakarusa, I was right around 50, 5,700. I think I was at 5,700 when I, when I started work uh, for Horizon, but... The truck had uh, been broken, hauling things already, starting at lightweight, getting some, some highway time, some city driving, and then some fairly heavy weight. And since then, uh, it's been deadhead and, and campers. Um, sat and did the math, I think in four months and 42 loads, I have done a little over 5,000 miles deadhead, which isn't great uh but two of those were by choice uh i i abandoned loads that were closer because i wanted a specific load uh you know those those big money loads that i've told you guys about out of goshen um <clears throat> so i was willing to deadhead a thousand miles because i knew what i was picking up and it was going to pay well and it was worth worth it to me to sacrifice two hundred dollars in uh in diesel and a day and a half on the road to get that big payday going back the other way. So a little over 5,000 in a deadhead, but as far as the ability of, of picking up loads and um, being forced deadhead, for lack of a better term, I, it's, it's probably around 3,500 or 3,000. So for four months, that's not bad. Was it four months? August, September, October? Yeah, four months. Today... Today means today makes four months. Um, so, that being said, we're gonna go over this truck uh, front to back and uh, go over the things I like, the things I don't, and did I screw up buying this truck? Especially considering what I paid for it. Uh, <clears throat> somehow. My hood is dirty. I may have forgot to wash it, actually, now that I think about it. I think I went around the whole truck and I forgot the hood. <laughs> it was really freaking cold when I was washing this thing. Um, so, uh, 
little little bit of shivering, a little bit of shaking, a little bit of I want to hurry the hell up. And because I had to move the pressure washer three times, because I did the trailer too. I, I washed the trailer as well. Didn't have to, uh, but it was it was really bad. And I wanted to knock some of that crap off there before we took off. And somehow I forgot to do the hood, I think. It makes sense. Anyway, so here's the truck. Uh, we're gonna start up at the front and we're gonna go all the way to the back, going over things I like, things I don't. Do I regret anything? Uh, aesthetically, I love this grill. I, I like the way Ford made the redesign on the grill. I think it looks great. Now, you've got this camera, which is really cool. Um, not the camera itself, but when we get to other features, you'll see why that camera plays such an important role. But it is very handy. I can hit a button up on the dash and it shows me a view and I can swing my bumper within a couple inches of something that I'm working around, uh, which has proven very useful pulling uh, RVs out of the yards, especially with having the, the wide track steering on this truck. Amazing. Also, you'll notice this little box over here that is not over here. Uh, that is the adaptive cruise control. Awesome feature. Um, when I have a camper on, I max out the distance. It's, it's about six seconds is what it holds. And no matter what I have my cruise control set to, it will keep the distance that I have set between itself and the car in front of it, but it will not exceed the cruise control that I set. So say I have it set at our, uh, our company speed 65. That's our, that's our policy. And the guy in front of me is doing 60. It'll slow down to 60 and keep that speed that the, uh, the guy in front of me is, and it'll keep that distance all by itself. Great feature. Uh, it also, well, I'll get into that when we get into the inside. Now, we have the camera on the front that I showed you, and there's also a camera right here in each mirror. And we're gonna jump for a second. There's a camera in the tailgate, which you all know about. There's two of them, actually. And so what those cameras do is they create a full 360 around the truck, and you can have a, a top-down view, as well as having all the... Uh, the um the individual camera views so you have the top down so you can see where your truck is maneuver it around great uh another reason that i wanted to well that i didn't do this video yesterday was i was having a problem with the uh automatic running board it it wouldn't come down i thought something had broke uh tried running the pressure washer through it maybe knock some crap off see you know whatever and it, it still wouldn't move uh crawled under there with a flashlight and i found a a little rock had wedged itself into the 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 hinge that moved for the moving of of uh, up and down and got that out of there and it works so i want to make sure that wasn't a some sort of a design issue or a flaw or something broke or, or whatever uh, snow's starting to come down pretty good. All right. So we covered the wide track. We covered the front end. Uh, we've got the, there's the, the cameras and that shows you the top down that I told you about. Uh, lane keep assist. Great feature. I don't use it very often, but it's nice to have. Obviously exhaust brake. I don't know why you have off-road downhill descent mode on a 450. I'm not sure who's taking these off-road. Except for maybe that guy, uh, Send It Steve, on YouTube. But he's a character. Uh, <clears throat> here's the controls for that adaptive cruise control. And obviously, you know, on, off, resume, all that stuff. But this is what sets that, that distance. Let's see. Without starting the engine. Uh, if it gives me all that stuff. Turn off all the alarms. All right. Yeah, okay, so cruise control on. And then you can see that, that line getting bigger and smaller. It's setting the distance as to how close you want it to uh, follow the vehicle in front of you. <clears throat> so that's something neat. Uh, and there you go. There's the, uh, the top down and the 
the front camera and it actually shows the the trailer behind me so i've used that many times just to make sure when i'm doing some uh some some tight corners because i have the wide track i can cut really sharp going forward as well as backwards then i'm not jackknifing which I've come close uh going forwards a few times um <clears throat> this the turning radius on this thing is nuts uh obviously you have the full auto climate zone thing uh, you know, you set your temperature and just it does its thing. That's not anything huge, major, new, but it's it's a nice feature. I really enjoy having it. Uh, satellite radio, something that has come in very handy with having the the higher trim level that I got uh, because of the, the the trim that I got is the truck has its own Wi-Fi. So what's neat about that is I have a printer that is Wi-Fi. And I have my tablet that is Wi-Fi. And I get all of my BOLs and my PC miler and all of my paperwork is emailed to me from my dispatcher. I can just print it out and go. Also, uh, many states, as I've mentioned before, we have to get trip permits. Call in, get the trip permit, they email it. That's all I use this for right now is email. Uh, it's an older iPad. Uh, I need to update it and get one so that it will talk to my ELD instead of using my phone just because that'll be a lot more convenient. But for now, I can hit my emails and I can print out my, my trip permits and I can print out all my stuff for work and everything is golden. Um, nice feature to have. Also, uh, let's see. Trailer setup. No, that's not doing what I want it to do. I forgot how I did it, but I went in there and you, because again, because the higher trim level, I have what they call a bliss. It's like blind spot, interactive assists. I don't remember what the acronym stands for, if they call it bliss. Uh, so what that does is you get those, those little yellow dots in your, uh, in your mirrors, right, right there. You, you can kind of see it. Not really. Anyway, there's a little little dot right there and it lights up yellow. And you can tell the truck how big your trailer is, how how long your trailer is, up to 33 feet. And then there's there's little sensors in here that if you don't have a trailer on, it senses here and it tells you when you've got a vehicle in your in your uh in your lane that you would hit if you change lanes um but if you have it if you have a trailer hooked up it also takes into account the length of your trailer all the way to 33 feet so about here so i got a, a couple feet that it doesn't account for and i have to keep an eye on that when i'm hauling the the, the longer trailers but when you get into those spots where you know you you're that guy doing four or five miles an hour more than, uh, than the semi. Get over, you start getting around the semi, and unfortunately you are blocking traffic a little bit. Uh, I, I try to keep that to a minimum. Um, if I see a car coming up, I'll sacrifice the you know, 20, 30 seconds, whatever, let the car get around me before I get over. But there's been several times where I'll be passing a semi and then we start going downhill and he picks up some speed and now I'm just barely crawling past him and you know I got one or two cars behind me and I'll, I'll use that so that I know instead of just looking in the mirror and being like yeah I know I definitely have plenty of time that thing tells me I'm clear and I can get over uh, again not needed but something nice to have that uh, I didn't know I was getting that came with this because I got a stupid trim level <clears throat> so we talked about the Wi-Fi we talked about the blind spot we talked about the adaptive cruise control all things that come on this higher trim level that uh again I didn't know I was getting the the only reason I got the higher trim level was for the massaging seats for my my spine uh just all these other things are nice creature comforts that came with it that didn't know I was getting um also Right next to that cigarette lighter, there's a 110 outlet. Uh, there's also a 110 outlet in, in the back seat. So that's neat. Uh, I've got an impact drill that 
I use for a couple of various things, not, not the lug nuts, I have a torque wrench, but there are things that uh, I use the impact for that it comes in very handy to have. Uh, and I've got a charger on there so that I can keep it charged up uh, as needed. I also have this battery that I have to always use. And there was a time when uh, I had that issue of the truck not charging, which was because I was backing up and a dealership, I had the tailgate down because I was hooked up to a fifth wheel and the guy came in and hooked up to that while I was still backing up and it blew my fuse for uh, charging the battery. Now the issue is on these, on top of the fuse, it also throws a code in the computer. So even though you change the fuse, you have to go in and, and reprogram the computer so it'll charge. Uh, so for a few days I was running without that charging thing. I have a jumper box that I would use to charge up the battery. Um, it slowed me down a little bit, but I couldn't, I had to wait till I could drop the trailer, which took two days. Uh, and then I deadheaded home and I got it fixed. But for that, that two days, every time I stopped for, you know, my 30 minute break or my 10 hour, or there was a couple other times I would stop, I would throw that jumper box on there and let it recharge the battery. And then I'd put it back in and let it charge in the truck. So some, some neat little things. Um, <clears throat> other than that, there, there's not a whole lot. I mean, yeah, it came with the Line X or Rhino Line or whatever it is, the bed liner. Uh, it came with that because it was the higher trim level. Uh, it's got the parking sensors in the back, which don't work if you have a trailer on. And if you have the cameras, I don't know why you would need the parking sensor, but whatever, it's got it. Uh, it's got it in the front too. Um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to go over this truck. Uh, the things that I like about it, the things I don't. Um, I still don't have air conditioning, but as you can see, it's not really needed right now. Uh, kind of down in California, it's still in the 60s or so, but for the time being, crack the window and, and just uh, roll on. Um, I do plan on getting it taken care of, but Ford says that they need it for like a week and a half. And right now I just, I can't not move for a week and a half. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm working with the, uh, the fleet manager there because of the size of the truck, it has to go into their fleet bay. And we're trying to set up a time so that I can have a guaranteed hole and I can come in and then it'll only be for two or three days and then uh, move forward from there. But this time of year, it's not a rush. So it's kind of more of a, we're trying to work together and um, <clears throat> find a way that works for everybody. Uh, aside from the, the air conditioning and the only other complaint I have about this truck is when you're in tow hole mode, it hangs in the gears. Like I have the crew set at 65 and it starts going up a hill and it downshifts because it's, it wants to downshift and it gets back up to 65 and then we level out. It'll hang at like 3,300 RPM and just sit there for a while. Uh, I don't know. I mean, a while, like five or 10 seconds, but it just sits there and then it'll finally shift it in, into sixth gear. Um, I don't know why it does that. I would assume it, it, it thinks it's saving the transmission so you're not wearing out the uh, the clutches in sixth gear. But I just slap it down in the manual and pop it up into six and let it go. Um, I mean, yeah, if I was going up a hill, sure, stay in fifth and you just be at that higher R RPM. But once we've leveled out, shift. And it, it just sits there for too long. Uh, it's not a huge end of the world thing like, oh my God, this truck sucks. But it it's a complaint. Uh, like I said, the air conditioning and the uh, the transmission not doing or hanging in the gears when you're in tow haul mode. Other than that, I have absolutely nothing to complain about this truck. Uh, now, a lot of you came here 
under the assumption that I have a hundred thousand dollar truck. It, yes and no. Uh, I got them down to 78 out the door, I believe. But I had a Duramax that was in not great shape. And uh, I wound up very upside down on that because I only owned it for a few months. But I bought it used and there was no warranty. And uh, yeah, we were upside down. So that 78 out the door, or it was, set, no, it was 70, 77 plus all the fees. And then you roll in my negative equity off of the uh, Duramax and that's what got us to the 102. Um, you know, I didn't go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar truck. Like I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I've done some real bonehead things in my life, but I wouldn't go that far. Um, so it was 77. Now with the 450, I mean, we've talked about the things that you get with the, the platinum trim, which was nice. I didn't want platinum. I wanted King Ranch, but it's whatever. But the big reason for the 450 was this axle and these wheels. I mean, 50,000 miles, and they're still... Look, look at that. That's a, there's a ton of life left in that tire. Like, 50,000 miles, and there's still that much. Can't complain. Uh, anyway, I'm going to be getting on the road here in a couple hours. Uh, church should be evacuating in, uh, in about an hour or so, and this is a 26-minute video. Absolutely by far my longest one. But I had the time, and... Uh, I told you guys that once we crossed 50, uh, we would go over the truck and some of the neat features of it. And do I think that I made a good call? Uh, yeah. You know, like I said, I didn't want the platinum, but it was all I could get. It was all that was in my area. And the, uh, the dealership that had the truck I wanted didn't want to work with me. So would I do it again? Absolutely. Uh, this truck has performed above and beyond what I thought it would. Um, it has hauled the, the heaviest of campers I've been able to find uh, with ease, obviously. But I know that I'm not working it hard, which is nice. You know, I can get that 19,000 pound trailer, camper, fifth wheel, whatever, toy hauler. And I'm not working the truck. It doesn't care. So did I need a 450? No. Am I glad I did it? Absolutely. Uh, and I would do it again. In fact, once I wear this one out, my next one probably will be a 450 again. Uh, well, maybe I'm looking at making, making some changes. We'll see how, uh, we'll see what happens, but there might be some modifications coming to this truck. Need to do some shopping around and, uh, and see what happens. Uh, that's for another video though. So I guess we'll see what happens there. Um, anyway, that's, uh, oh, I've had a, a lot of questions on this now that I think about it. So... <laughs> This is just something I need to take off that I haven't yet. Uh, I got rock tamers when I was first going to start with Horizon, and this is just the mount for them, and they bolt on here and then come out and over. And they said those don't work, and I had to get a full width, which is what this is. So I just need to take that off. Uh, this is the Husky mount with the weight distribution hitch. And uh, I had one of you asking about the types and this one with the chain and then it, it is a, a pin in here and it locks in place instead of the other ones that go and then angle up and then they go up into the hole and then when you tighten the chain it cocks it over and locks it in place uh, I'm not a fan of that style personally just because I, I think you run the risk of it being able to pop out uh, will it probably not but I would much rather have oh. I would much rather have this style for uh, for what I'm trying to do. Anyway. Um, okay, so really at this time, that, that ends this video. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, one of you emailed me this morning and asked a ton of questions. I think I was able to answer everything. If not, go ahead and let me know, and I'll do my best to uh, answer that. Uh, and this is the, the 50,000 miles on the truck. Now... Like I said, I, it's not over the mechanics. I mean, it's a diesel. It should be 50,000 is nothing. You know, it's, it's not even broken yet. Uh, but the truck itself, uh, the, the features of the truck, if my only issue is some 
switch relay thing on the air conditioning. I'm not upset about that. Uh, you know, it's it's got a, a ton of features that could short out and cause problems. You know, the the, uh, the adaptive cruise control, the automatic wipers, the automatic headlights, the automatic high beams, the automatic everything. And, on, and none of it has given me an issue other than, uh, I will say, going through Utah and Idaho Falls, that got covered in ice and I lost cruise control for a while until it, it thawed. Not a big deal. You know, it, was, it wasn't that it broke. It detected it wasn't able to safely monitor the car in front of it and it uh, shut off cruise control for safety. Not a big deal. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to go in. Uh, we've got the truck all packed up. I need a shower, and then we're just waiting for church to, to let out, which should be in uh, about an hour or so. We're going to get on the road and see how far we can make it today. As always, those of you traveling, I wish you fair winds and following seas. Take care and have a great day.